Hello, my name is Norman Siegel. I am a civil rights lawyer, and today is July 4, 2020. On the 4th of July, I read the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the amendments to the Constitution. For the past dozen years, I have read these documents with a group of people, including the fabulous Granny Peace Brigade. This year, due to the coronavirus, I will present a brief overview of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the amendments without the public gathering. July 4, 2020 presents huge issues facing our nation. One, a pandemic where our federal response has been unsatisfactory and where the federal government continues to be unable to develop a national coordinated response to this public health crisis. Two, an unwillingness to provide equal protection under the law to communities of color, especially the Black and Latino communities, and to Native Americans, women, LGBTQ+, the elderly, and low-income communities. And third, an economic crisis with millions of Americans currently unemployed. Hopefully, the killing of George Floyd, captured in a video, has awakened America across racial lines to begin to better understand what, for example, Black Lives Matter means, not just rhetorically, but with meaningful and substantial institutional and cultural change throughout our nation. It's not only about police reform, although that is long overdue. It's about racial justice and equality. It's about political and economic change, education reform, health care, affordable housing, improving working conditions for many Americans, and many more needed reforms. This past year, the Supreme Court of the United States rendered some good and then some bad decisions. In the past two weeks, we learned that Title VII of the Civil Rights Law includes protections for sexual orientation and gender identity. We learned that the Department of Homeland Security decision to end DACA was arbitrary and capricious under the Administrative Procedure Act. And the attempt by the state of Louisiana to restrict the right of women to choose to have an abortion was denied. Yet the Supreme Court ruled that religious schools can participate in state programs that provide scholarships to students attending private schools. And finally, the Supreme Court let an appeals court ruling allowing executions in federal death cases to resume. Now let's go to these documents. First, the Declaration of Independence, July 4, 1776. Let me just read part of the beginning. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, better all people, are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, we should change that to people, deriving their powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. I read that to be peaceful means. Let's now look at the Constitution of the United States. Constitution signed on September 17, 1787. The preamble, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect human, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, provide the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States. Now, in Article I, which is about the legislative branch of government, Section 2 is an infamous, notorious provision which talks about how they count free persons, excluding Indians not taxed, and three-fifths of all other persons. 
Isn't that in part what Black Lives Matter is about? That section of Article One says impeachment. House of Representatives, the sole power of impeachment. In Section 3, it says the Senate should try the impeachment, as we recently saw. Section 8, important provision, Congress shall declare war. In Article 2, we're dealing with the executive branch of government. Section 1 says the president can grant pardons, except in cases of impeachment. Section 3, a very important provision, President shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Query, is President Trump doing this, especially regarding the pandemic? And Section 4 sets forth the grounds for impeachment. Article 3 addresses the judiciary, Supreme Court, and the federal courts. Article 5 sets forth what, are, what is the process for amendments to the Constitution. We've had 27 amendments. The first 10 amendments, known as the Bill of Rights, were ratified on December 15, 1791. The last amendment, number 27, May 7, 1992. So let me look at, very briefly, some of the amendments. Number one, my favorite. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting, prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Amendment four, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizures shall not be violated. Our amendment six, that you have the right to assistance of counsel in your defense. Amendment 8, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. We turn to the Amendment 14. Amendment 14, most important in my opinion, it provides for due process of law, meaning fairness. It provides for equal protection of the law, that we treat people equally. And let's look at the right to vote three provisions, the 15th, the 19th, and the 26th. The 15th reads in section one, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Very important. With regard to the 19th Amendment, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Interesting here, this was passed August 18th, 1920. So next month will be the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. And finally, the 26th Amendment, the right of citizens of the United States who are 18 years of age or older to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of age. This was passed on July 1, 1971. So next July, it'll be the 50th anniversary. So let me conclude in wishing you a happy 4th of July. Today, July 4, 2020, with marches, rallies all across the country, from New York to San Francisco, from Atlanta to Denver, from small towns and villages, people are coming together across racial, gender identity, economic, religious, and age lines to say, we the people demand freedom, justice, equality, and fairness for all, not some. We want our country to practice what it preaches. We want it to provide for what is in the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and many of the provisions of the Constitution. Very simply, we want everyone to treat everyone the same way, regardless of our differences. So on this 4th of July, 2020, we need to continue the peaceful protests, continue the marches and rallies, continue to speak up, read the Declaration, the Constitution, and the 27 Amendments, and be informed about what these documents provide. And perhaps most important, participate and vote 
vote this November 3, 2020. Thank you. Happy 4th of July.